It's time for the first semi-final of the Iron Woman event. And what a start list we have here. Harriet Brown from the Northcliffe Club kicks us off as we head down. Rebecca Creedy, our teammate, one to watch. Maddie Dunn's in there. Georgia Miller, Alex Nolan from Northcliffe as well. Carly Nerven, Eliza Smith, and rounding out with Bay Wilden Sned. And the girls are all pushed up on one end of the start line and they're off at the moment. Naomi, why are all the girls heading down that way? It looks like that sweep's obviously going to bring them back. A little bit of experience shown there from Crystal Smith in the Northcliffe cap. Yeah, it's definitely very tricky out there today. The girls are pushing south to head into that rip, hopefully to end up on that first swim can. Look at the water. It's nasty. It's a tough day out there, so they've got to make the most of the conditions. And we see those distinctive Northcliffe colours there. The white cap with the maroon star making their way out. And it looks like Crystal Smith's taking the lead. How much will experience come into play here on a day like today? Oh, you'd think a lot. Crystal's been racing a long time and she loves this beach, loves the conditions and it's just great to see her racing still. I think she's 32 these these days, so she's pushing up there, racing 15-year-olds. But it's the young guns who are leading out at the moment. It looks like Georgia Miller out in front, two times Australian surf race champion there, really making the most of her favoured leg early on as the girls try and push down a wave. It looks like a Corumban cap's down it as well, so Georgia Miller will miss out on the right Right hand side there. It looks like a Corumban cap on the far left and there's Northcliffe cap in the middle there. So that might be Harriet Brown or Crystal Smith on the way in. So great body surfing from these girls. How tough is it to get those broken waves? Yeah, these girls are doing a great job. It's so small, so tricky. You can see it picking up everywhere and obviously Georgia, the, the best swimmer in the field, just missed that wave and she's just stuck in a hole there. It's um, something Curra was synonymous for at the moment. These waves are peaking as more girls get waves on Georgia Miller. She'll be devastated after so much effort there. Another couple of Northcliffe caps. So the strong Gold Coast Club doing really well. And on the way in there, that looks like Harriet Brown has done a great job there. So she's a noted swimmer as well. Third in the professional series last year and really looking to make her mark in this opening Ironwoman race alongside Carly Nerven there from the Corumban Club. So she's doing a great job in this opening leg. It'll be tough to catch her from there but there's still a long way to go in this Iron Woman semi-final. That's it. The swim leg is definitely the slowest, the longest time in the ocean, but Harriet's just done a great job there. Carly right on her heels and definitely set themselves up for a good race. We've still got the ski and the board to go, so there's a long race out there, but definitely giving the girls a chance. Carly Northern was a breakthrough athlete in the summer of surf last year, taking out three rounds and really trying to step up with the likes of Harriet Brown. Maddie Dunn in third place. She was one of those Northcliffe caps that was coming through, but where's Georgia Miller? She's gone from leading this race to not in the top three at the moment. She's got a lot of work to do. Georgia recently qualified. There she is. Georgia recently qualified for the Kellogg Series this year, so she's definitely on the ball. She will be in the hunt for this race and, and chasing these girls very hard. Rebecca Creedy next around the flag in fourth place alongside Taylor Biscarrick, another of the young competitors. Eliza Smith, fellow Northcliffe competitor, back in sixth place. So the chase is really on, but this is where it starts to matter here. Eighth, ninth, tenth. You've got to get yourself in the final here. So these girls are going to be going hammer and Tong for it. That looks like Ella Brown from Maruchidor. She'll run round as well. A couple of the girls have got a lot of work to do to catch up here. Ella Heinegger there from Byron Bay alongside Crystal Smith and she has a lot of catching up to do. We'd expect her to be higher up at this point. Very, very experienced Crystal. She has been racing a number of years and board leg, one of her strongest legs. I think she'll be fine. She knows how to race. She knows where she's at and she knows this beach. As we see Georgia Miller sit up there and just get knocked by one at the moment but it's Harriet Brown up and over doing really Really well. The look at those long arms. It makes such a difference in board paddling, doesn't it, Naomi? Definitely. Harriet is the current world champion in the board race, so she knows what to do. She knows how to move her board, and she's doing a really good job out there at this stage. So Harriet Brown out in front. It looks like Carly Nerven. They're just jumping onto her wash. She'll be trying to conserve energy there, getting on the tail of the more experienced competitor, Maddie Dunn, back in third place, down on the stomach. How important is it to, to uh, conserve a bit of energy in these semifinals with finals coming up later on in the event? How important is that but making sure you still get through yeah it's it's always a, it's a tough tough line to draw i guess the girls have to get through that's the, the aim of the game you can't sit on the sidelines and watch that but the girls do a good job at that they've got to put it out there in the swim leg and then you know they've got to keep getting out and around in and out clean each time but i think these girls that are in the series that do race all the time a bit older they've got that experience under their belt they can do it they know where they're at and they know 
they know how the other girls gauge off them as well. Maddie Dunn making a massive effort once she's out the back. But we saw that group chasing in 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th, really starting to pack up there. So the pressure's on back there in the red zone. These girls will want to get through in the top eight. But look at our leaders out in front. Harriet Brown rounding that first orange can. She takes a quick look back, makes sure she's got enough room out in front. But Carly Nerven not letting her go. And Maddie Dunn about to jump on the tail of the pair of them. Yeah, the girls are doing a great job. Look at them. They're just down on their tummies, breathing, having a look around, seeing where they're at, counting, counting, always counting to make sure they're in that top eight. As they start to make their way back to shore out there, we see how these conditions have started to change throughout the day. The winds really come on here. We can see it pushing from right to left on your screen. How much of a difference will it be for the girls who can chase those runners, make the board run in these kinds of conditions? Yeah, it's certainly a skill. The girls will chase these little swells, trying to get... Oh, trying to get anything so they can get down, get to the beach as quick as they can and get in clean, then hopefully on their skis and out they go. So they have a look, they're always looking and they're always hunting. On the knees is the best way to get down those little bumps. So you'll see the girls lining up with the can on the beach, the flags on the beach, trying to figure out where the best spot is for them to to line up. We talk about course management at the moment. Harriet Brown's doing it beautifully. She's out in front. Carly Nerven challenging for the lead as well. Maddie Dunn in third. Then the race is on. Georgia Miller was so unlucky in that opening leg. She's still in fourth place. And then we have a pack of seven or eight girls there fighting it out for only eight spots as Carly Nerven comes up to join George, uh, to join Harriet Brown. Sorry, she's not going to let her go. We saw the fight in her all year. Just sat up there. They know a wave's coming. Great work from our three leaders. Yeah, Maddie Dunn definitely doing that the best out of the girls. Coming right up on Whoa, the... Oh, what's going on there from Harriet Brown? She's just sat up and let that one go. Maddie Dunn can't believe what she's seen. Look, at she just shakes her head. What, why would she have done that? Oh, teammates, I guess she just misjudged that. She just had a shocker. It's, um, it, it happens and it's only a semi-final. Hopefully for Harriet, it's enough time to make it up in the ski league. Yeah, terrible mistake there from Harriet Brown. But these two former training partners out in front at the moment, Maddie Dunn and Carly Nerven. So you wouldn't see a mistake like that from such an experienced competitor any time. But I guess it's the first race of the season. They're a little bit rusty at the moment. And I guess all Harriet Brown can do can laugh about it. Yeah, it's a tough time to have a, a learning mistake like that. But like you said, first round of the series, first time to iron out the cobwebs and get on with the... The important stuff of racing the big girls. That's it. She'll be better from here, that's for sure. And I think she might be kicking herself at the moment. Georgia Miller, great board leg from her. She's still in fourth. Harriet looks like she's having a blast, but she knows she stuffed that one up. She may not live it down as she heads into the final ski leg. Georgia Miller looking fit and strong as always as the girls make their way out on the ski. Naomi, some, this is something that you're very good at. How important is it to get that ski up and moving, especially when it's the last leg, you're tired and you're really struggling? It is difficult. It's a drag run in start, so the girls have to pick up their <laughs> very heavy skis and drag them into the water after they've been out there for 10, 12 minutes already. The girls have to get their bottom in the ski and get out of that shore break. George is doing a really good job. She's worked on her ski leg very much so in the last 12 months improving all the time and she's really taking it to the, the older, more senior girls. How much is it about technique and, and using your skiability or is it just about getting the ski up and moving as Bay Wilden Snedden there from Alexandra Headland. She's only under 17, so great performance there from one of the young guns. And this is one of the best reasons Summer of Surf's doing so well as Danielle McKenzie's got a lot of work to do. She's a long way back. It'd be a massive upset if she missed out. But in this Summer of Surf, you get the young guns racing against the professional guys and there's the opportunity for an upset as a couple of the girls go off there so this tricky car or surf really making things hard for the ski paddlers and crystal smith very experienced just heading out on the northern end of the, the girls there she didn't make any mistakes got on got out clean it's all about timing yeah there's a definitely a, a, an aspect of skill uh, not so much technique, I'd say, in the shore. It's just about getting in, grunting your ski and getting through that shorey clean, unscathed and staying away from the other girls. Great shots on there on board with these skis as the girls try to make their way out through the break. Interestingly, we saw the girls head down to the south in that opening swim leg, but it seems like they've all gone to the north here on the ski. Is, the, is that just choosing a different rip or they found a gap there and thought their way out as a few of the girls start to make their way, really push it out the back of the ocean? Yeah, the girls are doing a good job. They obviously pick what's coming. Well, they see what's coming at them and pick their line as they hit the water with their skis. So Harriet's doing a great job. She's worked on her ski also. It's definitely a, a weakness that the girls have, so they're all picking that up each season. And that's more about strength than, than skill or ability there as Harriet really pushes out in front on that yellow. Georgia Miller in second. And then this is where the race is on. On the black with the pink nose there, that is 
Ella Brown from the Maroochydore Club. Crystal Smith, that looks like her back in sixth place at the moment. So right on the edge there. Then there's a couple of Northcliffe caps and Danielle McKenzie. She's on the outer at the moment. She's in 10th place with a lot of work to do. So she's one of the big names in this field. You'd expect for her to be up the front. And she looks like she's making a move at the moment past the less experienced, a little bit younger, Bay Wilden Sneddon from Alexandra Headland. And it looks like Maddie Dunn's picked a runner up on the way home there. So a restrained performance from Maddie Dunn, one of the veterans in the field. A great performance for her. That'll give her confidence heading into the final. Yeah, Maddie's done a great job sneaking out and around pretty clean there. And she's going to make her way to the beach nicely as Danny's still burning around those cans on the outside, trying to hunt girls down and chase them all the way to those top eight to make the final. Looks like a little bit of desperation on her face there as Maddie Dunn cruises home. She's very happy, gives the crowd the thumbs up. It looks like Carly Nerven in there as well. So those two will have no problems. One and two are home. They'll be able to jog it up the beach. But the race is on back in five, six, seven and eight. Carly Nerven, the distinctive. She seems to lose her cap a little bit. I don't know what happens there, but maybe doesn't like the skull cap all that much as Maddie Dunn cruises to victory here in semi-final one of the women's Iron Woman race there. Very easily done from her. Harriet Brown, a few things to improve on. She'll be better in the final. Yeah, Harriet's coming along nicely. I think those, those few mistakes, you know, she can work on those, move on from that and definitely have a better race in the how, final. How much is it about letting those mistakes go now and just concentrating on doing the right thing as Georgia Miller shoots down one, pulls the nose up and out there. Great performance from her as well. Yeah, the girls, it's, it's definitely about making the final. It's not about who wins the semi. It's always getting through. Like Rebecca Creedy coming at, back off the back of the gold. She's come well enough to be in the mix and this is where this is your crunch zone this is the tough times well there's four across now five if you count harriet brown as well so these last three look like they'll be our eight in at the moment and as we take a look it looks like eliza smith there alongside crystal smith as well so the race is on the girls are going to go they don't know whether they're in or not no ella brown's in so this is the race on for the top eight there ella brown snuck home tala Pascarix out in front she's got the quicker legs at the moment it looks like crystal smith will get home and knock her club mate out eliza smith she's in the professional series and someone you'd expect to be in the final but she won't be there tomorrow, finishing in ninth place alongside Danielle McKenzie there, another name we'd expect to see in the top eight. But Maddie Dunn out in front, what a performance from her there. Carly Nerven in second. As we take a look over the page at the competitors that will not make it through to the opening Ironwoman final of the Summer of Surf.